going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to auto auction rebuilds we are back at it again with another insurance auto auctions walk around here in oklahoma city we're going to start today with a 2015 chevy silverado it's a half ton pickup truck it's a texas edition and i saw the pictures of it and i was like okay it doesn't look so bad why don't we come out here and just take a look at it put our hands on it try to figure out exactly how bad it is so i'm going to start on the worst side at least i i think this is the worst side okay you got a got a little damage to the fender there a little ding in the door a little scrape right there this one ouch yeah that one that that sucks and then you go back here and you got some gravel and some little oh oh no 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 i didn't see that oh man i didn't see that how how did i miss that oh well that's not good um i can pretty much assure you the frame rail is right there right like right there <laughs> uh yep well okay so the bed is toast the bumpers toast and i'd say there's a fairly good possibility there might be some frame damage back there guys just maybe yeah somehow i totally missed that now well, it is what it is at this point uh let's go ahead and finish taking a look at it i don't think we're gonna spend a whole lot of time on this one i didn't realize it had been crunched up in the back like that i saw the side i didn't see the back and that's my bad I suppose someone can still make it a decent truck. Boy, it's all scratched up right there pretty bad, too. <sighs> Hell, you know, i just drive a dang thing. <laughs> That's what I would do. I would just drive it, throw the sucker back on the road. Someone left the ignition on. That's really nice. So now it's dead as a doornail. Really, really nice. Where is the hood release? There she is. Let's go take a look, see what she's working with under the hood. 5.3? I bet it's a 5.3. I mean, it could be a 4.3. I think it's a 5.3, though. It's a Texas edition, man. It's got to at least have a V8 in it, right? Ugh. Open sesame. That's definitely a V8. And it's going to be a 5.3. I'm certain of it. If I could find where it shows. Yep, 5.3. 5.3. Uh, this is really uh, professional right here. Looks like someone, you know, taped up a hole. That's, uh, that's always a good sign. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, guys. I don't think I'm interested in this one. I wonder what the miles are on it. Does it even say up there what the miles are? It doesn't. I don't think it does. No. If it does, I'm missing it somewhere. Uh, mileage, 73,000 miles, I think. Hell, I don't know. Either way, I'm not interested in this one, guys. So, uh, let's move on to the next one. Dang it, Randy, why are you always showing junk on this channel? You don't look at any good cars. It's all just junk. Well, I guess it's because I really enjoy junk. I like finding things that people consider junk, and I like reviving them. I like bringing the junk back to life and giving them a second shot, man. I really do. So the things that uh, a lot of you look at and you get mad at me because you consider them junk, hey, remember, you don't have to watch the video, okay? You can always skip ahead if you're not interested in it. And this is one that I think a lot of you are probably going to see is nothing more than a pile of scrap. But I look at it and it just somehow takes me back to days when I was younger, seeing some of these driving around and thinking, wow, they must be rich. Keep in mind, I was a kid. I had no concept of money or time or really much of anything else for that matter. Uh, yeah, I thought people driving around in these must have a lot of money. And, you know, I guess they, some of them probably did. Some of them probably did. It's got a, it's a 96, got a 4.6 under the hood. It's listed as a non-runner. It is listed as engine damage. Engine damage. Well, heck, that could mean a lot of things. I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of a 4.6, man. This is, uh, it's not like it's a super rare motor. It's not like it's a complicated motor. There really ain't much to these things, uh, other than the fact that it's over a cam and you got the timing chain to deal with. But other than that, not a big deal. I'm just curious to see. Doesn't want to crank. Doesn't want to do anything. You know, engine damage. That can mean a lot of things. But it definitely says that it doesn't run. This is a very interesting color. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. It's kind of a pink peach. Sort of. 
I might be seeing the color totally wrong. It seems like the color kind of changes depending on where I'm standing too. But to me, it looks kind of like a, a, a pink peach it sort of color. The back end is sitting on the ground. So I can't remember if these had airbags in the back or if they were just the, uh, the air shocks that had a little compressor under the hood that airs up. Um, let's take a look at the interior. Oh, wow. No, dude, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Are you kidding me? Oh man, don't do it, Randy. The last thing you need is this project like this. Ugh. You know, you gotta send it in for paint. Obviously, it's gotta be repainted. Oh, it's 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 beautiful, guys. I can already tell you it's gonna need a jump. I can see the lights are on on the interior, but they're a little on the dim side. So we'll go ahead and uh, save us a little bit of time here. Throw a jump on it real quick. Looks like it's got a marine battery on it too, man. Hey, they ain't playing. Let's we'll throw a little little bit of juice on her. It's got 8.5 volts on the battery currently. We'll jump that up to about 12. There we go. 11.8 volts now. That should uh that should make her happy. All right, let's see what kind of engine damage we're talking about here. Are we talking about locked up engine damage or are we talking about you know, so it actually smells good in here. Oh, I love it. What does this keychain say? Get her done. Get her done racing. <laughs> I love it. It's my kind of car right here, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh oh. Come on, get the key in there. I heard the fuel pump. I see some gauges. but we got absolutely nothing coming from the starter. I don't know if I would call that engine damage. Put it in neutral, still nothing. Huh. Well, this is fun. I like this. I'm hearing absolutely nothing from the starter. Nothing at all. Important window works. I would almost bet that once you get this thing running, the back end might just come up off the ground. I'm gonna look around for damage here. Let's see how bad the body is. It's actually not bad at all. There's really no damage to the body. She just needs paint. She just needs paint. So, engine damage. I don't think so, guys. I don't. I think this was having a starter issue. Starter solenoid issue. Uh, something to that effect. And I think they couldn't figure it out. Probably a wiring thing that they just didn't want to get into. I also noticed the uh, air conditioning here is disconnected. I don't even see the wires to it laying anywhere even remotely around it. I could be just missing it, but you can see somebody put new spark plug wires on it. Max protection, max power. Uh, yeah, okay. Yep. Hmm. I would almost be willing to bet that we're gonna have either a starter relay issue or a wiring issue going to the starter solenoid, the, uh, that little wire that tells it to go ahead and start cranking. I would, uh, I would almost put money on it. I would almost bet that I could probably have this thing running in a day. She's full of coolant. That's good. She's full of coolant. Uh, I am very curious where the heck the wiring is for that air conditioning because she ain't going, oh, there it is right there. It's right there. Okay. So the wiring is here. Someone just disconnected it. That's fine. I'm just making sure we don't have like a rat's nest, a, a lot of wiring issues or anything. Let's pull the trans dipstick. You can tell I'm serious about this one. I'm serious about this one. How's that look? It actually looks decent. It's dark. It's not bright. But she hasn't turned brown and it's not black yet. So I'm going to say the transmission fluid looks, looks okay. So we got coolant. We got trans fluid. I'd love to know if we got oil as well. 
and we do. Nice golden oil. Nice and full. All right. Well, we have the AC clutch relay, fuel pump relay, EEC power relay, power steering fluid. I bet if we got down there, guys, I mean, we can't do it here. Obviously, we'd have to buy the car. We'd have to buy the car. But if we bought the car, I'd be willing to bet if we just get down there and jump the starter solenoid, uh, we could probably get her. I mean, I guarantee we get her cranking. We get her cranking. You get her cranking, it's probably not too far-fetched to think that you might actually be able to get it running. I love this one, guys. I, I really do. Jessica is going to hate it. She is not going to be happy if I drag this thing home. <sighs> I feel like I got to. I feel like I got to. I don't, I don't think there's any way around it, man. Oh, it's locked. Executive series, man. Look at those wire wheels. They're probably just hubcaps, right? Nope, those aren't hubcaps, I don't think. They don't look like hubcaps, guys. Um, no, I don't think those are hubcaps at all, actually. I don't see anywhere that they would pop off maybe i don't know yeah you guys come are these no no those are those are wire wheels dude holy crap those are real those are real wire wheels with some beautiful white walls oh let's pop the trunk you know could be a blown fuse. There's a lot of things it could be. The digital dash works. She's got half a tank of gas. The fuel pump I hear working. Hazards are on. Turn signals work. Huh. Okay. Well, we've, get up, we've done about as much as we can do here, guys. There's a new serpentine belt in the trunk. It still has the spare tire sitting back there. Um, don't do it, Randy. Well, you knew this was coming. Nobody in their right mind is going to bid on this car. Because who, who wants one of these, right? You gotta be you gotta be crazy to want a car like this, especially one this is engine damage. I'm telling you guys, it's been sitting a long time. I, I can see that. It's it's been sitting a while, so I want it. The fact that the fuel pump still works, I think this thing's got a shot. So we're gonna go ahead and put a pre-bit on it right now. I don't know. I this one I don't want to go very high on. You know, I really don't. There's just too many unknowns with it, and it's probably not worth much even when it's running anyway. But I'm willing to do like uh, let's do 550 as a maximum bid. Pre-bid submitted. There we go. We're in it at $25. As with all the other cars, we'll come back and see what happens after the auction. Next on my list is another one that says it doesn't run. A 2009 Ford Escape. This is a donation. This is a charity vehicle. Non-runner. I don't know what the miles or anything are, but I'm looking at it so far and it looks pretty dang good. It's got a really nice set of tires on it. The body looks nice. I mean, it's got a set of Michelins, okay? So it was somebody that wasn't afraid to spend a little money on it. It's like a slightly cracked tail light there. Not too bad. Yeah, she's got a very nice set of Michelins. These are LTXs. Huh. And a non-runner. Well, I do wonder what the miles are on it. Okay, she's been sitting. You guys know I, I really like these ones. I really like the ones that have been sitting. You just don't know what you're going to get out of these, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I always hope that I'll come out here and the non-runners will actually run. Um, and sometimes that does happen, but it seems like it's been happening less and less lately. I think maybe, uh, maybe I gave too much away. Okay. People started catching on. We've got good, clean coolant in both reservoirs for the inverter and for the engine. Let's check the oil. She's got oil. Not enough, but uh, it does have oil. 
very low, but it does have oil. So that's a positive, okay? Transmission fluid, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Um, you're not gonna find a dipstick for the transmission on this. I can guarantee you the battery's going to be dead, or should we call it flat for those across the pond there, right? The battery is flat. All right. Let's go ahead and just save ourselves a little bit of time and hook this up now. And we'll find out if she's got any juice here in just a minute. As soon as we hook this up, it's going to tell us, do we have any juice? No, she is definitely dead as a doornail. All right, battery pack's running low. It's running low. We've put her to work today, guys. All right. Make sure we're attached nice and firm here. We are. All right. Let's take a look at the interior real quick. Oh. Oh, okay. Whew. At least that door was unlocked. Careful. I'll try real hard not to not to damage anything here or scratch anything. The interior is a little dirty, but you know, that'll clean up. We have a dashboard. We have gauges. I hear a radio. Let's go ahead and just turn that off. Ah, another one that doesn't makes no attempt to do anything when you turn the key on. Not a click, nothing. Sounds like a like a bad starter, don't it? Yep. I always put them in neutral as well because you just never know. Neutral safety start switch could act up, and you know, it's also good to kind of push it good into park just to. Yeah. Nothing at all coming from the engine, huh? Huh. You know, the problem is, I don't know enough about these hybrid systems to, uh, <laughs> to think I want to jump on one and figure out that, uh, stop safely now. Oh, because my door is open? Hold on. Hold on. Maybe it doesn't want to tire sensor fault. Maybe it doesn't want to start because the door is open. Oil change required. Okay. Stop safely now. No, it's not because the door is open. Put, definitely got my, my foot on the brake here as well. Nothing there. Nope. Okay. Well. Hmm. While this one is interesting, I'm not sure that this is one that I want to jump into. If this was just a straight up gasoline car, then yeah, maybe. You know what? It's a hybrid. Could it be that it's already running? Hold on. Hold on. Could it? Surely not. Surely not. Hold on. I'm listening for a gas engine to kick in, and I'm forgetting that that's not quite how these work, right? So... Okay, the ignition's on. No. Pretty sure the gas engine shoulda, shoulda kicked in, right? We also have a check engine light flashing. That's interesting. Check engine light is flashing. It Uh, newfangled technology I ain't got the patience for it well we had to try and try we did and fail we did as well um, on this one I wasn't really expecting it was going to fire up boy I was hoping it would it's got a current bid of a thousand dollars on it right now and you know, while that's really not that much, and the miles aren't high on it, it's got, I think, 144,000 miles on it. Um, you know, this is very similar to that Lincoln. It looks like someone just parked the dang thing. It could be a problem with the ignition switch, possibly. I don't know. It could be a problem with the starter. It could be a problem with the wiring between the starter and the ignition switch. It could be a million things. It could be a fuse. It could be a key that's no longer programmed. That's another thing. Could have lost somehow. Somehow lost the programming for that key and it's not recognizing it anymore um, as a key to start the vehicle. Again, I have no idea. 
but because this is a hybrid system and I do not understand it, I'm not going to pretend like I, I do it all. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to avoid this one because uh, it'll be my luck. It'll be like, oh, no big deal. You just need a starter. Great. Well, the starter is built into the transmission and it's going to cost you $5,000. Nah, I'll, I'll pass, guys. It's a nice looking vehicle, but this one's not for us. Let's move along. All right, next on my list, we got a 2010 Mercedes-Benz E550. You can see it took a little bit of front end damage there. One of the things I really like about this one though is it's already got a clear title, all right? So it's got a little bit of damage, nothing too serious so far, but a clear title. Of course, it's got that V8 under the hood. It's got lots of markings all over it for apparently a small impact right there. Teeny tiny, scratching right here, an impact here where it's got a ding like seriously i'm gonna wipe all that off we're gonna forget about it it's got that beautiful panoramic roof as well look at that nice panoramic roof goes all the way back guys it looks like it's got a little bit of scratching over here as well and they're nice enough to tell you that the aluminum is torn right here so this is one of the things i really like about cars that come here directly from the body shop they're going to write on the car pretty much everything you need to get a list for to replace the broken components broken parts put it back together this is a fairly simple one the front bumper doesn't look to be in too terribly bad a shape uh, it could probably be salvaged if you wanted to do a little work on it I do think this bumper could probably be saved. It's not broken or anything. It's a little rough, but I think it could clean up and put back together, get some new grills. Um, this would rivet right back in. This is totally fixable, guys. Totally fixable. I don't know if the hood is going to open on this or not. Uh, let's see. I'm curious to see how bad the damage is under here if it's damaged under here. Let's take a look. Okay, no. No, even the the headlight is still intact too. On this side? Yeah. The course port? Everything still looks good here, guys. This car, I'm gonna tell you right now, this car's sitting at 1500 bucks. 1500 bucks. I don't know what the miles are. I do know it's listed as a run and drive. I think it's sick. I think the car looks sick. This is a good looking ride. What kind of tires we got on it? We got we got Brabaris, Brabaris 24540R18s. Uh, I don't know who Brabaris is. I ain't never heard of that before, but but what, whatever, man. This tire is not the same. This is a Atrezzo, an Atrezzo tire. Okay, okay. And what do we got over here? Looks like over here we got another, a matching Atrezzo tire. And let's see what we got up front here. Is this another Barbados? Nope, it's an Atrezzo. So it's got three out of four tires that match. I'm going to guarantee you she's dead as a doornail. So you know what we're going to do. We're going to jump right in with the old trusty booster pack. I'm going to fire this bad boy up because uh, at 1500 bucks, that's not going to happen on my watch, guys. If it runs, nah. <laughs> nope, we're going to throw a, we're going to throw a, a bit on this immediately. I uh, really like this car. Let's see if she's got any juice. No, no juice at all. So the booster pack's not going to be happy. I'm telling you, booster pack is about out of juice today. She might be able to start one more after this. And then she is going to be dead as a doornail herself. Let's see. Oh, here's the, here's where they want you to ground it right here. There we go. We're connected. We're good. Oh man, I love this car. Like I, I really do. I really love this car. Uh, okay, we got some green paint on the, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, okay, well, the interior doesn't look nearly as nice as it does on the outside. You got this thing here hanging. I don't know what's going on with this, but, you know, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, man? Yeah, she's, she's not in the greatest of condition. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. Let's hear it run. She fired right up. Does the important window work? Yes, it does. Uh, check coolant. See operator's manual. We also have a check engine light. Let's go ahead and turn that radio off. The steering feels good. The seating is awful in this. Like this, this seat is. I got. You got to lift this up for me, man. I'm. I'm not tall enough. I mean, I'm not a. Yeah, I'm not tall enough to be put all the way on the ground like that. Uh, the seat doesn't move forward or backwards, so you're stuck where the seat is. AC does work though, guys. AC is ice cold. 
I saw coolant in the reservoir, so I'm sure that it does have coolant. Okay, this little cover here, there we go. Now it's not hanging down anymore, at least. It'd be nice if there was an actual cover for it, but I guess that's all there is. Uh, oh, there the seat goes. There we go. Uh, I'm becoming a little more interested in it as time goes on. Goes into drive. Goes into reverse. It's a good looking car. It's a good looking car. I, I, I like it. It's just, it's a little ratty on the interior, man. I would have liked it to have been a little, uh, a little nicer on the inside. But you know, whatever. Engine sounds healthy. It sounds healthy. Um, let's see if we can take a peek in the trunk. See if she's got anything going on back here. Oh yeah, you've got your uh, you got your your uh, your intake boot there. You got that core support cover right there. There's a bag of stuff that I'm not I'm not going to bother with, but uh, looks like some of the pieces maybe to the grills and everything to the front. You got your Mercedes Benz booklet. Whatever this is, a jack or something. There's a wig too. Yeah, a couple wigs. Okay. I don't know, guys. What do you think? I mean, fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars for a Benz. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's full of coolant, so that's a lie. That check coolant level is an absolute lie. She's got she's got plenty of coolant. It's actually full almost to the top. Listen to her. She purrs, man. She purrs. Yeah, I think I'm interested in this one, guys. I do. Uh, probably against my better judgment. I know better than to get into Mercedes, but this is a nice two-door E-Class V8 that, you know, worst case scenario, what, needs a front bumper? Needs a front bumper. Okay. They throw a front bumper on it. Uh, throw a front bumper on it. Maybe you have to take the bumper to make and get it painted and toss it back together. She's a decent little ride, man. I'd roll this thing all day. Let's pull up the app and let's put in a bid. All right, here it is. 2010 Mercedes E550. Current bid of 15 and a quarter. And if that camera just fell, I'm sorry if it moved, guys. So collision front end, 121,000 miles on the odometer. Airbags are all intact. Progressive insurance. Clear title. Again, like I said earlier, I love that it's got a clear title. 5.5 liter V8 engine. Okay. Let's throw a bid on this one. What do you think? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of like 2,500. Okay, let's just go ahead and throw that bid on there right now. I mean, it's worth more than that, guys. We're winning it right there. We're winning it at $2,000. Beat that. Last one on the list, guys. Who remembers the old two-door Blazer? I loved these things when they first came out. I can't remember what year they came out. Was it 94 or 95? Uh, was the first year they came out with these. I fell in love with this style of blazer. Uh, this is not the 4x4. The 4x4 doesn't have these really cool deep dish rims, all right? The 4x4 has got more traditional looking rims that'd be fitting on a four wheel drive. This is like a sporty looking blazer. It's got the 43 Vortec under the hood. Man, I have always been a sucker for this old school blazer. It's got mismatched tires all the way around it and i still love it um let's take a look let's take a look at the back here can we uh does it even have a no i guess it's all all remote what is yang 2020 i don't even know what that means what is that okay anyway we're we're gonna focus on some other stuff here yeah she i think she might have a few miles on her guys but but look at this it's got the back support probably for someone a little bit older right I mean, that's what I think when I see that. I'm thinking this must have belonged to someone a little bit older. The seat is scooted way forward, like maybe a shorter lady. That is a doornail, but it does have an after work at Sony Explode stereo system. You got manual crank windows, aftermarket speakers. I don't know if you guys can see those in there, but it's got aftermarket speakers. And then how do you get in the back? Well, you just fold the seat up, man, and uh, hop on in. The interior doesn't look bad on this. It really doesn't. I think the hood may already be popped. So let's go ahead and take a peek under the hood. Let's throw a jump on it real quick. Oh, it doesn't have mismatched tires. Primewell Valera, Primewell Valera, and they got good tread, by the way. Uh, that's that's a different one. Goodyear, Wrangler, and a Primewell Valera. 
Okay. Uh, and honestly, it doesn't look that bad, guys. It's. I think it just needs a good cleaning. Honestly. It. Oh, she's been sitting a while too. Another one. Okay. This one looks like it's been sitting a long while. <laughs> Okay, we got a Duralast battery. Let's start with checking the basics, right? Let's... Ugh. We've got deck school and a fairly new looking radiator cap, okay? That radiator cap is in very good condition. Uh, looks very new. The coolant looks very new. The oil is clean and full. Uh, so far, I say we're winning. We're on a winning streak. Now, now let's check... Let's check the trans. How's the trans look? Well, you know, I've seen better and I've seen worse. Kind of dab it on here. I like to dab it on this white label here. It makes it a lot easier to see, you know, really what's in that fluid and a better idea of what the color truly is. Smell it. It doesn't smell bad. It doesn't. It needs serviced. Now that doesn't mean the transmission is good either. But the fact that it's got dirty looking fluid makes me feel a little bit better about it. Uh, I don't mind doing a trans service. Okay, so coolant is good, trans is good, oil is good. I mean, the only thing that's not good is a charge on a battery. Let's go ahead and throw a little boost on her, man. And like I said, this is probably the last one we're gonna, we're gonna do for today. There was one more I had on my list, but I can't find it. And I, yes, I could go ask somebody. I'm not trying to bother these people. You know, they have a job to do without me bothering them. Oh, the, the booster pack's not dead. Never mind. I thought it was on its last legs. It's not. It's a 75% charge. Okay. I thought she was dead. Must have been the sun, you know, got in the way. I just couldn't see it. Yeah, but anyway, you know, I don't go bother these people if I can't find something. Like, they've got stuff that they're already doing without me being here. I think it's generous enough that they let me come here and record videos. You know, I think that's super awesome of them to let me do that. Um, so the last thing I want to do is come out here and become a, a, a burden or a pest, you know, bothering them about, hey, can you help me with this? Help me with that? Nah. Uh-uh. Um... Does this not have tilt? She runs. I'll be, oh, 205,000 miles. Wow. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. 205, 288. 205, 288. Okay, we got an ABS light. The brake light's on, I think, because the, the parking brake is on. Or maybe. Nope, it's just on. It's just on. So we got a brake light, we got an ABS light. We do have brakes though. Brakes feel good. Steering feels good. Reverse. Yeah, forward. Backward. Forward. Good oil pressure. We wouldn't dare dream that air conditioning might work right i'm gonna i'm gonna say i don't expect the air conditioning to work i don't we got a little power outlet right here that's missing i guess oh these plastic interiors man i don't know what gm was thinking well hell it wasn't just gm i think most auto manufacturers ended oh wow hold up that's cold ac too yes That engine sounds really, really good. Like, really good. Better than I would have expected. Uh, seats need a little bit of work, I think. Yeah, the seat's kind of, you know, leaning. Whatever, whatever, man. It's an old blazer. Love this thing. Give her a good detail, clean her up. She'd be ready to get back on the road, man. The lights work. Look at this beauty. Is the alternator charging? Yes, it is. 14 volts. Boy, I got to stop or I'm going to go broke out here, man. I think I got a bit on this one, too. This is, this is nice. This is real nice, guys. She runs like an absolute dream. Go ahead and close this hood. quiet super quiet 
I'll go ahead and shut those. Oh, the lights are. Are they automatic or something? Did they just turn themselves on? That's supposed to be. I think the headlights are stuck on, guys. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think the headlights may actually be stuck on. Yeah, I think they are. So the headlight switch may be bad. Okay. Because when I turn them on, the dimmer doesn't change down there. Like, it, it, and even when they're off, I can turn the dimmer switch up and down, and the lights on the dash go up and down with it. So yeah, I think the, uh, I think the headlight switch there is bad, or the relay is stuck. Um, that's a possibility as well. I'd like to get into the hatch. Unfortunately, I don't know how to do that. I thought there would be a, a button or something, and I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything at all on how to open the hatch. It's been so long, I can't remember. Like, I know you could put your key in this, right? But I think this whole hatch here is supposed to open. She seems to be running well. Yeah, the headlights are stuck on, guys. Uh, wouldn't that be crazy if they parked it and stopped driving this beast because of a headlight switch or a stuck relay? Yeah, headlights are off, but as you can see, corner lights are on, headlights are on. It's just gonna be a gonna be a switch, I guarantee it. It's gonna be a switch or a relay, no big deal. Comment below, man, what do you think? What do you think, should we, I mean, it's got 200,000 miles, I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, I'm not going to keep it. I know you guys are always like, oh, if you buy this, you should keep it. If you buy that, you should keep it. I, I don't keep anything, guys. I buy it because it's fun. I enjoy bringing them home. I enjoy playing with them for a little bit. And then like a kid with a new toy, I quickly tire of them. And down the road, it has to go so that I can bring home new toys for myself to play with. Um, this is just something fun for me. It really is. I really enjoy just bringing these things home and, and playing with them for a little bit until I get bored with them, at which point down the road they gotta go. Okay, let's pull up the app. Let's go ahead and throw a bit on it. All right, here it is, 2005. Shit, 2005? This is not a 2005. Nah, I don't believe that for a minute. This is a 90s, man. It's like a 95, maybe. Sorry, guys, this wasn't anticipated. All right, it's a, it is an 05. This is an 05? Okay. Well, I was wrong. I can admit it. Fine. It's an 05 Blazer. It says 205 on the odometer. Clear title. 190 horses, baby. Rear wheel drive only. All right. What do you guys think, man? I I really, honestly, I don't need this. I, I, I kind of... I kind of want it just to drive it, but other than that, like that's it. So I don't really think I want to put a lot on it. Let's throw a let's throw a 950. Let's throw a 950 on it. There we go. Current bid 225. We're winning it. And now, let's do something real fun. Okay, let's go to my account and let's go to pre bids. We have five pre bids currently. Let's take a look. We got a 2010 Mercedes that we're winning, an E550, an 04 Monte Carlo, a 94 Lincoln Town Car, a 2005 Blazer, and a 2001 M M320, ML320. Okay, we're winning the ML for 25 bucks. We're winning the Blazer at 225. We're winning the Lincoln at 25. We're winning the Monte Carlo at 250. And we're winning the E550 at two grand. That is a lot of car for very little money here, guys. Seriously, seriously. We got like $2,500, $2,600 in cars, and you're looking at one, two, three, four, five vehicles. Two of them are Mercedes, one's a Lincoln, and two are Chevys. Get out of here, man. We're done, that's it. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna get out of here, we're done. Thank goodness. I, 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 I think I found a lot of treasures out here. To me, personally, these are the kind of cars I really, really like, man. I, I love and enjoy finding these old things. And unfortunately, a lot of you guys do comment and say that it's all junk and there's nothing but junk on this channel. And, you know, if that's the case, I respectfully ask, just don't watch the videos, man. You know, if you're not interested in the content I'm producing, why watch the video and then complain about the video? I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, for me, 
me, when I watch videos, if I get through a video and I'm like not entertained or I'm just not into it anymore, I just stop watching it. I don't drop a comment and say, boy, that video was boring. Oh, this video sucked. What do you, I don't even bother with it. I don't have time for that. So please just don't watch the video if you're not enjoying the content, man. Like I think most of you watching, you enjoy the same type of stuff I do. Mostly old junk, old junk. Now, to me, it's not junk, but to some of the naysayers out there, old junk, it's all junk. Why are we showing this junk on the channel? Well, you know what? Because some of this junk managed to survive over time. While most of that junk has been crushed and scrapped, a few of these are still out here running. And it's my job, it's my goal to bring them back onto the road, put them back into the public hands, put them back into service, man, so they have another chance at living a life around all these newer model cars that are already in the junkyard, you know, 10 years before these cars ever found their way to one. So, you know, junk, uh, maybe to some, but to me, it's treasure. And, and we've been on some different things today, today guys. Like that, that E550, right? A 2010 E550, that's not traditional for this channel, but I thought, you know, maybe some of you would enjoy seeing an E550 on the channel. If I can bring it to you, I will. And I thought maybe some of you enjoy seeing an ML320, okay? We'll try to diversify a little bit. I'll try to change it up from just old Chevys and Fords. Maybe we can find a few things that'll entertain everybody. I try my best to keep everybody happy, but let me tell you, it's hard. <laughs> it's real hard. Again, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Insurance Auto Auctions for letting me come out here and, and browse through their inventory, man. I had a really good time out here today. I hope you did too. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, man. Share the video with your friends and definitely drop a comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite car or cars out of this video. And if you want to, how much would you have bid? Would you bid more on the E550 than I bid? Would you bid more on the Blazer or less? Definitely drop those comments below i read them i may not have time to respond to all of them but i read your comments and i love seeing you guys down there in the comment section with that i'm going to get out of here stay safe out there everybody i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one